Hey, this is Tommy at Alderman Farms. At the recent Deep South Homestead Spring Gathering, Patty had the opportunity to talk about something that is near and dear to her heart, and that is growing a lot on a little. She loves to encourage beginning homesteaders and even apartment steaders, balcony steaders, uh, to, someone said, bloom where you are. I wish I could remember who, I'd give them credit. But anyway, here's Patty's talk from the Deep South Homestead Spring Gathering. Good afternoon. I've had a great time meeting everybody. We've just had so much fun. This, I, I'd rather just have to holler at y'all than have to do this thing. But anyway, I'll try my best. Y'all tell me if I get further and further and further away like that, okay? But, um, you know, it, I've had it on my heart. Um, we did a, a couple of YouTube shows and we just got a good response from people because I know not everybody's like us, like Danny and Wanda, that has a huge area to garden. We've also met people at uh, conference uh, conferences that 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 share their experience, and they're they're not like us. They, they they don't have the space we have. And some of you may, some of you may not. You may not be able, even if you have the space, to be able to work the space. And so I just. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things we do and things that you can do um, right where you're at. No matter where you're at, you can do something as far as helping to get good food in your diet or in your freezer. Um, right now, we do a lot of square foot gardening or square box gardening. And uh, my boxes are like uh, four foot by 12 foot. That's the easiest way i found to garden. Now, I don't grow my green beans and stuff like that in my boxes, but uh, in simple, and you don't have to have a box. Tommy has built the boxes for me. I could build the box, I think. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could do it. The lumber would be a little heavy for me, uh, the 12 foot long and everything, but I mean, it's still something that I could do or something that wouldn't cost a lot if you had to hire somebody to do that for you. Um, I'm just thinking about uh, maybe a woman that doesn't have a man that can, you know, do the, the heavy work or whatever. But, um, uh, you can grow 24 tomato plants easily. I've grown 36. I don't suggest it because then you have a tomato jungle and it's hard to get in there. But um, 24 tomato plants is a lot of tomato plants. You would put tomatoes in the freezer if you did a box with 24 tomatoes. Same with peppers. I grow tons of lettuce in my boxes. Um, herbs. You can grow cucumbers. And you know, a lot of people do. Do you grow cucumbers on the ground? Raise your hand. Do you raise them, grow them vertically? I try. About half and half. I love to grow cucumbers vertically. I did not know you grew them on the ground. People who grew them on the ground. Um, but that takes up so much less space to go up with your cucumbers. And so that, and that's easy. You can have tons of cucumbers just on a four foot side of a box. You know, um, planted on both sides of like a little piece of cat and cat. Um, Potatoes grow in the boxes, greens grow in boxes, strawberries. I mean, I don't grow squash in my boxes only because they get so big and it takes up so much space. You know, that would be something easier to make you just a little mound somewhere and put your squash where it can move. But um, let's see, I already told you the only thing I don't grow in there is pole beans. I don't grow squash. Um, or have it. I don't always grow these same things in my boxes. I've actually moved okay. my tomato. Yeah, you, okra. you could grow okra easily in boxes, and once it gets up, you could actually plant something smaller, like lettuce or something like that down below it. It would be perfectly fine. Um, let's see. Um, you could actually grow, you wouldn't have to put just tomatoes in your box, just uh, lettuce in your box. You could arrange your boxes to where, but you have to watch how the sun is going to come over your box because you don't want to shade out certain plants. You know, um, but you can plant tomatoes and lettuce together. Actually, where we're at here in Mississippi, by the time the tomatoes are getting big and shading out lettuce, you can't grow lettuce anyway, it's too hot. You know, so you could actually do some double planting in the same space, you know, with, with your lettuce and tomatoes. So I just, that's, I love to garden in my boxes. And actually, now that I'm getting a little bit older too, it's not as easy to be on my knees. You can sit on the side of the box, you know, and, and lean over into the box. So uh, that's one thing I like about it. Um, I have six to eight boxes. I think I counted eight uh, yeah. in my garden. Um, and I find that they are much less labor. 
uh, and, and as far as, and we're, we're moving towards the no-till. Every year I used to put my manure on the top and turn it over and turn it over. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm just building my soil up. And I actually don't always, depending on what I'm planting, I don't fertilize the whole top of my box. When I dig my hole for my tomato plant, I fertilize in my hole. I don't need everything else fertilized, you know? I fertilize where I'm planting. But it's a lot less work. Once you keep the weeds away until when the plants get bigger, the sun, um, I mean the shade, you know, doesn't allow the weeds to grow as much. So, um, anyway. but. So what if you don't have a yard, or what if you don't have enough yard for boxes, or if you don't want boxes, but you want a little bit of fresh vegetables? Don't forget that you have room around your house. If you have a house, you have room around your house. There's bound to be some sun somewhere around it. Maybe not, but but you can plant in your flower beds. There are beautiful, beautiful uh, plants that you can put in the flower beds, and and. You know, you can go online and look up what different plants look like. But for instance, potatoes are beautiful plants. People would not realize that, that that's your greenery. And then they have this beautiful purple flower, sometimes a white flower, and, that they bloom. So, and, and potatoes are good. When they start dying back, it's time to dig them. So you pull them up, put something else there. Um, Green onions, you can use them as a barter to your flower beds, you know, instead of the monkey grass that goes crazy and goes everywhere, use green onions. I mean, it, it, it would be perfectly fine. Um, squash is very pretty. Squash is very pretty. I guess I don't like to hear myself, you know. Um, but one thing about gardening in your flower bed, squash plants do tend to get a little ugly sometimes when, they start to, when they're starting to finish growing. All you do is you have another squash plant ready to go in, you pull that one, put the other one. By the time it starts getting ugly, it's almost fruit producing anyway. So um, you can plant purple and green cabbage. It's really pretty. In fact, my sister-in-law is not a vegetable gardener. She loves flower beds. She's taken all those courses, fancy courses on how to landscape and all that kind of stuff. And she loves doing that. She grows beautiful flower beds. Her husband is a vegetable gardener though. But we drove up in her house one time and out by her bed by the road, and she's got immaculate, beautiful beds everywhere. She has purple and green cabbage growing. And I'm like, really? You know, she was doing that. You know, and so, but it's because it's pretty. Um, you could even grow bush green beans. It's greenery. You know, I mean, if you look at the different flower beds that are like really intricate and really pretty, there's different colors, different color of greens and stuff like that, and I mean, it can make a very pretty bed. Strawberries are pretty too, that you can put in, in, in hanging baskets, like on your porch. You know, they're very, very, very pretty. So, um, let's see. In, in your flower bed, you know, you may not be able to produce enough food to last you all year. I would imagine in some flower beds, you could produce enough food to put some stuff, some enough food to put in the freezer but um, maybe not enough to last you all year, but you could surely produce a lot of vegetables to keep you eating through the growing season, you know. Um, next I wanna talk about if you don't have a house that has a big enough yard to have a garden or a flower bed, if you live in an apartment, there's still an answer if you have a little balcony. Because we met a lady at uh, the Great Appalachian Homestead Conference last year, and this is, she's the one her name is Jan. She's the one that got me thinking along these lines and about, you know, not everybody's like me. Everybody has different, there are different places in their life and have different spaces that they live in. And um, she had an apartment and she showed us the most beautiful pictures. You know, she had lettuce growing. She had herbs growing. On she, her balcony. On her balcony. She had green onion and she was a very small, it was a small balcony, like half of this table. Maybe, maybe a little, a little bit. A bit wider, but yeah, not, but, but maybe three-fourths of the length of this table. Yeah, maybe about three-fourths of the length of this table and a little bit wider. Um, but it did get some sun. You're going to have to have a little sun. But um, she had peppers. She even had a, no, I don't know if she had pole beans. She had something that ran. I can't, I can't remember. remember what it was, but yeah, she but did. But you could, if it, especially if it's just one person, you could take a three-gallon pot and poke hole, you know, put your pole beans in there and let it run up 
And you could probably, you might would have to pick it two or three times, but you could probably get you enough to cook you some green beans. Yeah, for one person anyway, maybe two. Um, but, you know, it's wherever you're at, you can put add fresh food to your diet. Now, sometimes you may say, I don't have a, okay, all these things, and I live in an apartment, but I don't have a balcony. Well, I am the manager at a farmer's market in Brookhaven. And I have, not, not just because I'm the manager, but because I buy from the farmers, some of the farmers. Now, I do grow most of my food that we, uh, use, that we eat, but there are still some things. Sometimes I'm not the one with the first tomato. I'm never the one with the first tomato. We're never the one never with the, the first tomato. tomato. So I do buy some tomatoes from them when they first come in. Um, I've bought bell pepper and just different things from the farmers when they start having come in. If it's something, I really don't, I've never done great with peppers. You know, I just never have. So I'll buy that. But anyway, um, go to your farmer's market. If, if it's to the point you, you cannot produce this stuff yourself for whatever reason that you can, go to your farmer's market, get to know your farmers. Um, last year, a farmer, Craig Smith, he just had an abundance of bell pepper. Just an abundance of bell pepper. We're still eating his bell pepper out of our freezer. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it's amazing. And he grew, I've never grown a great big bell pepper. Huge bell pepper, it's just beautiful. Um, and I actually text him as I was writing this because I don't always buy in bulk um, because I don't need to because I'm growing it myself. But I wanted to get his prices and I wanted to share with y'all for y'all that want to put food up to better have food year round, have good food that's been produced well. Um, and I know in your area, the prices may differ a little bit but not a ton. The bell pepper he sold for $14 for a five gallon bucket. Cucumbers were $15 for a five gallon bucket. Squash was $15 for a five gallon bucket and zucchini. Canning tomatoes was $20 and okra was $30 for a five gallon bucket. So a, a lot of people, unless you have a huge family, some of this stuff one bucket might do you to put in the freezer, you know, to be pulling out and everything. But um. You know, of course, your farmer's wanting to make a profit and everything, but sometimes they do. They get to where they have an abundance of things, especially after uh, they've had it coming in for a month or so, and everybody, the newness is worn off. They may not be selling as much. If you're a regular customer, they know your face, and you can tell them, hey, if you ever have a lot left over or whatever, give me a call. I would be interested in buying in bulk from you, and they'll do it. So that's just, I just want to encourage y'all, eat healthy whether you do it yourself, doing it a little bit, doing it a lot, um, or if you're actually going to have to go to the farmer's market to get it because it's worth it in your life to know where your food comes from. Anyway, that's all I have. Do you have anything, baby? Nope. I may be a little biased, but I think Patty did a great job with that. And listen, if you fall into the category of someone who doesn't know what you can do uh, to grow your own food if you, if you don't have any land to speak of or even if you're a renter in an apartment or some small area. I hope you found some encouragement and some ideas that you can put into effect immediately to help you have a little bit more control over the food that you eat. I hope you've got a farmer's market nearby and if you do, please patronize them. It'll mean the world to the farmers. Our farmers need our support. Hey, if you hadn't subscribed to us, would you do that now? Give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. It really does help us. And listen, don't forget, we go live right here on YouTube and on Facebook at Alderman Farms every Sunday or most Sundays at 8 p.m. Central. We'd love to have you there. Leave us a comment if you've got a question about growing a lot on a little or anything else about what we talk about or do here at Alderman Farms. Drop it in the comments and we'll do our best to respond. Thanks for watching. We appreciate every one of you. We really do.